guys, today I'm coming at you again with another fish focus. Uh, one of my favorite fish. Uh, I know everybody under the sun has done a video about them before, but I wanted to do one because it is, again, one of my favorite fish. It was one of the first egg layers that I bred. And when I say egg layers, more like, because uh, Cory's are egg layers and they're much easier to take care of than like a um, one of these fish. It was the first difficult egg layer um that i bred and it was it was just so exciting for me when i kept them because they're so small so pretty um so such a cool uh display fish for like a 20 a 10 a 15 uh any size smaller aquarium um it just depends on how you keep them again uh so let's get into it let me show you guys this one has been really fun to film because he likes to stay kind of in the middle of the water column because that java moss is that pairs actually that male that is swimming he's not he's kind of chasing the other fish away from that area i believe that they want to breed so which brings me to my next point uh sexing the peacock gudgeons it's very difficult when they're small but when they get larger like these guys um they are very easy to sex the males have a hump on their head and they don't have a black line under them and the females have a big yellow belly and a full black line on the anal fin uh, which is very visible. Um, but like I said, when they're small, that is a very difficult thing to see. Um, now, when we're talking about care for these guys, sometimes they can be picky with what they eat, but other than that, they are really, really easy to keep. Um, they are one of my favorite fish as far as um, an easy care display fish because of that. Uh, once they start eating, they're very hardy with the parameters around here. Um, and they are very, very wonderful with schooling fish and with the cleanup crew. Um, so really anything that is not going to compete for the same space, like I would not recommend doing crebenzis or rams or whatever, although you could do it, and I have seen tanks where people have done it, um, you usually just wanna keep things out of their area and keep things that aren't going to be aggressive towards them uh, in their own space, period, yeah. Um, so when we're talking about what they like to eat, I start them off on frozen food most of the time because uh, they are insectivores in the wild. They like to eat anything that's got a shell. Um, they are very, very fun to watch eat in my opinion. Uh, and that's mainly because uh, they have a very cool behavior being that they are a bottom dweller. Uh, and they are mainly, uh, I wouldn't say ambush, but they like to eat things that are above them. So they will dart to the top of the tank eat the food, go right back down, kind of like a Cory does. Um, but yeah, anything with a shell, they mostly want protein in their diet, but they're always going to uh, benefit from that extra bit of, of veg or nutrients that is in your food. Uh, as far as water parameters are concerned, uh, temperatures of anywhere from 72 to 80 are totally fine. A pH of 6.0 to 7.8, although 7.0, 7.2, 7.4, right around that area is best for them. Um, when you're looking at the hardness of the water or DKH, you usually want five to 12. Um, and then of course, you just want to make sure that they are happy and healthy and that you are communicating with your tank. No ammonia, no nitrite, push it home, uh, minimal amounts of nitrate uh, as long as you know, you're doing your water change and you're keeping up and doing your due diligence, you'll have a wonderful time. As you can see, they do really well in this tank because uh, there's schooling fish, the uh, serpe tetras, and then there's angelfish that like to stick towards the top of the tank or top of the water column, uh, which means that they don't really have com competition for their space, but if they do, they just chase them away. Uh, and they, they're less of a malicious intent uh, picker. They're only going to pick on things to get them out of their area. Um, like you can see that guy posturing at those angelfish that are near his little island of, um, of Java moss. Um, but yeah, they are a wonderful fish. If you're looking to breed them, I did a whole video about breeding them a little while ago, uh, and you should go check it out. Another gudgeon species I might want to show you guys while we're talking about gudgeons is this guy. This is a purple spot gudgeon, more of a, ooh, I scared him more of a predator gudgeon. Wow, let me let me back up. Let's see if there's one that's not really moving around that much. I just fed, so this might not be possible, but let's take a look-see and see if we can see anything. Yeah, here we go. This little guy right there, if it'll focus on him, is a 
purple spot gudgeon. And purple spot gudgeons, this guy's very small for what he's going to be. Um, they get about uh, eight inches, a very, very large gudgeon species, and they will be predatory towards your fish once they do get that large. Um, here he is, beautiful. Let's see if we can go to the side and see him. Beautiful, there's a bigger one too. Um, but they're a little bit more rare and they get really, really pretty. Very similar to the peacock gudgeons, except for that they get very, very large. Um, and of course, you know, some people really like the big fish. These guys are a good, slow moving, almost look like a snake head when they get older um, fish. Golly, they're so pretty. But anyways, I will see y'all next time and I hope that you come into the store to see them. Alrighty, alrighty.